Hello and welcome to the second part of my little tutorial series about how to shoot and then later on stitch panoramas. My name is Florian and if I may put a little plug in here, I run the website pano.ie that you're very welcome to visit. Anyway, so the other day we were out and about shooting the panoramas and we've got them in camera now. Uh, we've imported them into Lightroom and as I was saying the other day, I prefer to shoot in RAW because then I have a bit more leeway in uh, dealing with the white balance, you know, recover highlights, boost shadows and so on and so forth. Anyway, um, I've imported them into Lightroom, so what are the things that I'm going to do? What I would typically do is correct some lens defects, mainly remove some chromatic aberration of the, uh, especially in the lens, um, in the outer areas of the lens, this can be quite pronounced, especially with the Palang fish eye. And then I will do a bit of uh, white balance correction, um, reduce the contrast a little bit, which is quite strong in these images, and then export them, so nothing too special. So if you want, you're very welcome to skip this tutorial and go on to the next two parts, where I will show you how to stitch this first series. This was um, the technique number one that I showed with the Philopod pitch variation on the full frame camera. And I will also show you the third technique is this one here, the images where I use the tripod. I won't show you the second one because it's quite redundant um, with that third technique, except you don't have to worry about removing the tripod. So let's get started with the first four images. So I will select all four of, all, all four of these images because whatever um, adjustment I want to apply to these images, I want to apply to each of them. Apart from some local things like removing dust here or there, um, I'm not gonna do this in these pictures, but again, whatever you do, try to apply the same effects or the same edits to all the images equally so that later when you, you blend them together, you won't see any um, gradients between different images. So if I just hit the D key, I go into the um, develop module. I have prepared a little preset for myself, um, which is uh, this one here, Pilang for Pano, and I'll show you exactly what it does um, once I've applied it. So the first thing it does is, you might have seen, we've got the um, these areas are nicely dark now, so just added a bunch of gradients around the outer edge with the minus 4 EV, just to darken those down. The uh, benefit of that is that this is now purely black and when you export the images, the compression it will be a bit better in these areas and you have smaller file sizes. The next thing this preset does is it'll increase the clarity because with the Pilang you have a little bit of um, the contrasts aren't that great, especially on a bright day like this, so the clarity will help you a little bit with this. Another thing it does is adjust the sharpening of the images. These are just some um, values that I uh, tend to use and they seem to wor work quite well with the Pilang fisheye. Now, the next thing is I have created a little um, lens correction profile and what I use this mainly for is to remove the the uh, chromatic aberration around the edges of the image. I mean, you can use that as well to, uh, if you're lucky to have one of those, you can use those to defish your images as well, but we're not interested in that. So if you don't have a profile like that, then you're in this situation here and you will see some uh, chromatic aberrations right here in the church tower. Um, what you can then do is just remove them with these sliders here. I forgot what the values seem to use. I think it's around the 50s or so. Um, that seems to work quite well. And if you defringe them even more, then you have virtually no no edges anymore. So there you go. Even if it's a cheap lens, you can remove the chromatic aberrations fairly well. So. Another thing that this preset applies is a color profile. Again, this is optional. This is just one that I've created for the lens and my camera combination, just so I get consistent colors throughout. Now, after we've uh, after I've applied this preset, my next step in the workflow is first of all to work on the white balance. So this looks a little bit off here, um, and I suppose a value around about uh, six thousand would look much better. It was quite late in the afternoon. And if I remove some of that purple tinge, maybe it's a bit greenish now. But anyway, you can fiddle with this to your heart's content. Um, another thing that I will do is, because the buildings are quite dark relative to the sky, I'll bring in some fill light here. This is just basic post-processing, um, so you should have experience with that. Anyway, bring back the blacks a bit to regain some contrast. And that's starting to look quite well. I might increase the overall brightness still, because the image is a little bit dark. Uh, just keeping an eye on the histogram up there. Another thing that I can do with all these um, black areas is I can just crop the image away. So I see a little bit more, just crop it down to the image circle. All this again is applied to all the images consistently, all four of them. And that's starting to look good. So there you go, you should see it's 
propagate there you go to um, the four images and again if you look closely at those images you can see how I was aiming the camera slightly downwards here slightly upwards slightly down slightly up again so here are those four images now let's just have a quick look basically I'm doing similar things to um, the images that I took uh, with the crop camera again selecting all seven of them going to the develop, develop module hitting uh, the D key I will um, apply my color profile for this lens. By the way, if you can hear it in the background, that's my little daughter. She's just about to go to bed. Um, uh, I will apply a lens correction profile just to remove the chromatic aberration. And I will just double check that the noise reduction, yep, that's fine. Sharpening settings, they're all good. Um, clarity, 33, that's nice. So I'm going to bring in again some fill light here. We use 25, I think, and 10 in the blacks and a little bit more brightness. So now this should look roughly equal, these series of images. Yeah, they're a little bit warmer. So let me just bring down this the white balance to 6000. Bring this back to zero. And then we should have a more or less consistent look uh, among these images. So for some reason, the ground looks a little bit darker than in the other images. So let me just increase the brightness just a wee bit here. Maybe two clicks. Where's the brightness? There we go. And two clicks in this one. Now, those images should be quite consistent across the four images. And what you could do is if you wanted to apply a gradient to the sky, just to darken down that a little bit. But I will skip this step here because it's not that important to the overall tutorial. So once I've done post-processing these images, the last, well, not post-processing, but once I'm done developing the raw images, the last step obviously is to export these images. So let me just go to the export dialog. And what I typically use, I have a preset for that as well. I just export them as a TIFF file, as a W compression, leave it at 8-bit because I won't do any more color correction after the fact. If you want to do some color correction or edits to the overall panorama once it's stitched afterwards, I'd recommend to export it as 16-bits. Um, but if you don't uh, want intend to do any more corrections, 8-bit is perfectly fine. I'm applying a wee bit of sharpening here. Again, that's optional and it's probably a little bit redundant, but I'll just leave it in. And that's the last step. Just export it, create a folder. Let's call this Pano Tutorial. And the images go in there. And that's it. It's starting to export. So thank you very much for your attention with this tutorial. And I'll see you in the next two tutorials about how to stitch the first four images with the Philopod pitch variation and a separate one for the tripod images. And I might ex uh, throw in an extra tutorial about how to edit the natural direction because we will have some problems with the flare issues here from that lens. We will see uh, some of that on the floor. But I'll show you how to edit the vertically down um, direction so you can remove those flare problems. All right, cool. So that's it. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next tutorials. Bye.